All right. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Good evening. If you're joining us from another part of the world, good morning. Um, so just a couple housekeeping things before we get started. Throughout this presentation, if you have any questions, please put them into the Q&A box. And at the, after everyone presents, we're going to do um, live Q&A. So if you have questions throughout, just go ahead and put them in there and we'll try to get to everyone's questions um, at the end. So today we're going to be talking about two of the graduate programs at the NYU School of Professional Studies, the MS in Integrated Marketing and the MS in Public Relations and Corporate Communications. So welcome. Um, we're going to do some introductions, then we'll talk about the two programs and the curriculum for those programs. Then we have someone from admissions here to talk to us about the application process and financial aid. We have a representative from the advising team to talk to us about what the academic advisors do here and also go over a little bit about our Wasserman Center for Career Development. Then we have a student from the Integrated Marketing Program who will talk to you about the student experience. And finally, we have one of our esteemed faculty members from the Public Relations Program to give you a little bit of um, industry perspective. So my name is Bonnie Bergen. I'm the assistant director for the Public Relations and Corporate Communications program. We also refer to the program as PRCC. So if you hear that throughout the presentation, that's what we're talking about. We also have Natalie Meyer, who's the assistant director for the Integrated Marketing Program, also referred to as IM. We have Jennifer Scott, who's our clinical assistant professor for the PRCC program. So you'll hear from her later in the presentation. Andy Che is here. He's the Assistant Director of Academic Services, and he also serves as the um, Academic Advisor for the Public Relations Program. Darlene Passarelli is the Assistant Director um, for the Office of Admissions, so she's going to go over the application process and financial aid for you all. And finally, we have Ria Dedia, who is a student in the Integrated Marketing Program and also the President of the um, Integrated Marketing Association, which is the student club um, for the IM program. So just to give you kind of a little bit of where we sit within the university, because NYU is a, is a large university and can kind of get a little overwhelming having all the different departments and divisions. Um, so you have NYU, which is the whole university, and then within the university there's I want to say 17, 18 different schools. So we are the School of Professional Studies, also known as SPS. And then within SPS, it's, all, it's broken down into different divisions and centers. Um, so we, these two programs are within the Division of Programs and Business, also referred to as DPB. And then within that division, it's, it's broken out into different departments. So we are the Department of Integrated Marketing and Communications. Again, that department houses both the public relations and the integrated marketing um, program. So it's, you can see there's a lot of layers to the university. Um, so in my opinion, you really get the best of both worlds because you have that smaller, more intimate community within the department. But then as an NYU student, you have all the accessib accessibility to all the different resources that the larger university offers. So this is from a recent survey of why incoming students chose to come and study within these programs. Um, so we wanted to highlight some of the main reasons why students chose the, these programs. And then kind of throughout the presentation, we're gonna touch base on um, all of these as we go through. All right, thanks, Bonnie. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about the student organization, um, their options to get involved uh, when you're a student in the Department of, or pardon me, the Division of Programs and Business, which houses the Integrated Marketing and PRCC programs. Um, the first is the Integrated Marketing Association, which is for any student um, in the Integrated Marketing program, but also any student that's interested in these topics. Um, so the great thing about this organization is that they throw events, but it's also an opportunity to network. So one, a few of the events that I'll just point out that happened over the course of the past year was um, they hosted Javier Meza, who's the CMO of the Coca-Cola Sparkling. He talked a lot about what Coca-Cola is doing in this current climate, but also gave some great um, advice to students who are just beginning their careers. And we also host a um, day-long summit that is 
a lot of people are invited. Um, so not only students, but community members. And then the keynote speaker this past year was the creative director at Google. So a great opportunity to really get involved in the uh, New York City community um, who host um, thought leaders in the industry. The PRL or PR League is for the public uh, PRCC program. And it is very similar. Um, it is for the students that are in the master's program, um, but also for anyone that's interested. A couple of the things that they're working on right now is a monthly series um, dedicated to diversity and inclusion in the industry. Similarly, they also host a day-long summit each spring, and they're going to do um, an immersive hackathon this year. So great opportunities to meld um, real life experience and getting involved with the classroom and academics part of the um, master's of science program. Slide please. Similarly, the department also is really invested in connecting your academics with the industry, especially because we are living in New York City. Um, this is a pretty exhaustive list for the 1920 academic year. A couple of the ones I'll highlight are Rashad Tabakawala, Jim Joseph, Fred Garcia, they hosted book talks where they directly connected with their, our students, um, talked about their books, but also it gave them an the students an opportunity to network. It's so important for us to blend industry with the classroom um, to re and really kind of uh, get the real life experience of what it's like to be in the industry. Slide, please. Um, continuing on this theme, um, was one really important um, recommendation that we give to our students is to participate in internships. And it's so important um, that we offer an optional three credit course so that students can really go into the classroom and um, really delve deep into what their internship experience means, not only to their academics, but to their future careers. It is definitely an optional um, participation to, for this course, but we want you to know it's there because we are so, we value this type of experience so much. At the bottom, you'll see a couple of examples of where our students have interned in the past. It's not an exhaustive list, but a, a couple of really well-known companies that our students have um, had the opportunity to intern at. Slide, please. Uh, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the program itself now. Um, the MS and Integrated Marketing Program is comprised of 14 courses with 42 total credits. This is typically taken in four semesters or two years. So a fall spring followed by a fall spring. Uh, there is the first two semesters are core. So it's the same for everybody and it's really foundational. So it, what is marketing? How do you run a campaign? But also, you know, what, how do you use statistics and data in the, in the marketing industry? Um, then you spend your third semester really delving into one of three concentrations, and I'll go over that in the next slide. And finally, your programs culminates in a capstone, which is developing a business plan, a real life business plan. And it's, it's much smaller classes, you get direct mentorship from your instructor, um, and it's a wonderful culmination to the program. Uh, as I mentioned, there are three concentrations in integrated marketing, brand management, digital marketing, and marketing analytics. So uh, you take four courses, I believe, in this, um, in this concentration, and you re there's some that are crossover, but for the most part, you really delve deep into one area of marketing, and it allows you to really specialize and customize your experience. And even more so, the instructors that teach each of these classes are experts in that particular field. For example, I mentioned Jim Joseph earlier. He did, hosted one of our book talks and he actually is a teacher for us. He teaches a managing products and brands. So he's a well-known industry leader. He also is an instructor um, who really would help you along your path as you participate in the brand management concentration. The same is true for every other concentration. Um, so this is the integrated marketing, and I'm going to throw it back to Bonnie now to discuss the PRCC program. Great. Thanks, Natalie. So I'm going to go over kind of the same structure, but for the public relations and corporate communication program. So this program is also 14 courses for a total of 42 credits. Again, if you're a full-time student and you attend fall and spring, fall and spring, that would be two years. Um, but we really do make it very flexible for our students. So we have a lot of students who are working full time and attending this program part time. So you can take anywhere from one to four courses per semester um, and finish within five years. And you can also take courses over the summer. So you can still take, you know, maybe one or two each semester, but still take summer um, 
classes so you're not drawing it out. Um, so it's, it's very flexible in that sense. Um, so just to kind of give you an idea of what kind of courses you'll be taking in this program, all the way on the left hand side, those are all the core courses. So all of our students in this program take that um, list of courses. And then for this program, we have two concentrations. We have public relations management and corporate and organizational communications. So with, depending on which concentration you choose, you'll take three of the courses that are listed under that concentration. And you also have the op, op, um, option to take two courses in your concentration and you can do one from the other concentration if there's a specific area that you really wanna specialize in. And just so everybody knows, we will be sending out this um, slide deck out to everyone. So no need to write it down or take notes. Okay, so now I'm gonna hand it off to Darlene Passarelli who's gonna to talk to us about admissions and financial aid. Hi everyone, and thank you Bonnie, and thank you all again for joining us. My name is Darlene, uh, and as mentioned, I work within the Graduate Admissions Office. Um, so now I'm gonna walk you through the application process, including the admissions criteria, the deadlines, and then give you a very brief overview of some financial aid considerations and scholarship opportunities. Next slide. Okay, so now let's take a look at the deadlines. So as you can see from the slide here, uh, both the Integrated Marketing and the Public Relations Program offer a fall and a summer intake. And we are still currently accept accepting applications for the spring 2021 semester until November 30th for our domestic applicants. Um, so the fall 2021 application will open up January 15th. And then as you see to the right, there are final deadlines both for international uh, students as well as domestic students. So the final deadline for our international students is April 1, and then the final deadline for our domestic students is July 1. Um, so I know that date is, it seems pretty far out. Um, however, we do encourage you to apply as soon as possible. Um, that way we can make sure we received all your admissions documents and we're able to review your application in time. Um, so once you do have a uh, completed application where we received all your necessary materials, it typically takes about three to six weeks for you to get an admissions decision. Okay, next slide. So now that you've heard more about the programs, this is actually what you're gonna to need to apply. Um, so it all starts with the online application, which is available right through our website, sps.myu.edu. And within the application, you're going to be able to upload all your materials. Um, so one of the materials is a detailed resume. Um, so this should really outline your previous and current work experience, any of the internships that you have, um, or any of the highly transferable skills that are applicable to the program that would make you a strong candidate. Um, and then for the integrated marketing program, there is a personal statement. Um, so the statement of purpose, I think is a really uh, important aspect of the application. Um, and it really should be able to provide a clear understanding of your interest in the program and some of those goals that you have upon completion of your master's degree. And then for the PRCC program, um, there, there is no personal statement, but there are two short essay answers. Um, and these are really specifically geared towards the public relations industry. And then uh, within the application, there are two letters of recommendation. Um, and these can come from either professional or academic uh, sources, or it could be a combination of the two. But of course, you want to choose recommenders that can really speak on your, your character, your work ethic, your strengths, and your potential for success in a graduate program. Um, as well as we're going, to, we're going to need your college transcripts. So we do accept unofficial copies of your transcripts for the review purposes, so you can just upload those right into your application. Um, and if you attended multiple universities, we do request um, a transcript from each university that you attended. And then for international applicants, um, in addition to the, the, um, the requirements that I just mentioned, you also will be required to submit an official evaluation of your foreign credentials. So basically, um, we have six different providers that you can choose from. One of them is WES, ECE, where they will um, convert your, your transcripts to a 4.0 scale and also do any translations if, if needed um, and will confirm your degree equivalency to the US education system. Um, in addition, there are the TOEFL and IELTS um, test requirements. Um, so those you can upload right into your score and then uh, into your application. <laughs> and then for anyone um, who doesn't meet the minimum requirement of 110 on the TOEFL or an eight on the IELTS, will also be asked to participate in the Pearson BEPT. And this is uh, a test that will be given to you after you submit your application. So further instructions on how to participate will be sent at that point. 
Okay, so now we're going to go through some of the uh, financial aid resources for our domestic applicants. Um, so of course there are other options, but just just a few here. Um, so there's the federal loans. Um, so there are two main ones, the direct unsubsidized loan and there's a graduate plus loan. Um, and these offer low interest uh, payments uh, that you don't have to pay until you've graduated. Um, then there's also private loans as well as different scholarships. So for all students who have a FAFSA on file, um, you're eligible for this particular scholarship. It's a grant, so it's something you don't have to pay back. And it's up to $5,000 per academic year. Next slide. And then financial aid is limited for international students. However, there are a number of organizations that do have um, support to help students go back to school. Um, a lot of this is on our website as well as other opportunities. Um, but there's one here that I wanted to highlight because Ria is actually a Dean Scholar. Um, so there's a Dean Scholars program, which is open to both international and domestic students. Um, so it's when you're currently a student um, and if you achieved a high GPA, um, you could be eligible, you know, for this particular scholarship, which is $10,000 each academic year. And then in addition, there are NYU payment plans, which makes it easy to um, pay your bill, um, your tuition bill and low interest monthly payments. So there's the tuition pay plan, which allows you to do an all of, or a portion of your, your expenses in interest free monthly installments. The deferred payment plan, which allows you to defer your payment up to 50% of your bill to a later date. Um, and then the NYU SPS deferred tuition reimbursement plan, it's a mouthful. <laughs> and that's for our students who are currently working and if their employer provides tuition readmission assistance, um, which many of them do, um, it allows you to defer your payment up to the end of the term so your employer can reimburse you. So that concludes and now I'm going to hand it over to Andy. Thanks so much, Darlene. Hi, everyone. Just to reintroduce myself, my name is Andy Che. I am the Assistant Director of Academic Services, and I'm also the dedicated academic advisor to the Public Relations and Corporate Communications Program. I've been an advisor within the division for nearly five years, and I've also advised in other programs, including integrated marketing. And at this portion of our presentation, I want to talk to you all about one of the um, immensely helpful resources and uh, benefits of studying at NYU, which is our wonderful academic advising team. So as um, academic advisors to students um, in NYU programs, our goal is to essentially work with you as soon as you are admitted to the program. So we all hope that everyone here applies. And if you're admitted, you will then work with me or um, one of our wonderful other academic advisors on ensuring that you are getting started at your graduate studies on the right foot. So we will help you with course registration, help you work out an academic plan to ensure successful and efficient degree completion so that by the time you are done with your program, you are walking across Radio City Music Hall with your NYU diploma in hand. So in addition to working with students on course registration and devising an ac um, academic plan, we also help relay academic policies and procedures. We connect you to NYU resources. So if you are an international student and you want additional assistance with your writing, then we can connect you with the International Student Support Center, also known as the ISSE, to ensure that you're getting all the support you need outside of class. Um, and so we are happy to meet with students one-on-one -on -one. Uh, right now, we don't have any in-person sessions, but typically uh, pre-pandemic and post-pandemic, we will be meeting with students one-on-one. -on -one. In addition, we also meet with students on Zoom, and we offer a number of group advising sessions. So if you are an international student and you want to do an internship before you graduate, uh, Natalie talked about this earlier, and you want to make sure that you are receiving an internship for academic credit, you understand the curricular practical training, CPT, authorization process. And if you need any tips on you know, finding an internship, come to our group advising internship info session that we have every semester to ensure that you are being able to maximize um, all the benefits and resources here at NYU. In addition, um, I was mentioning earlier how we have an act we help students with academic planning. Uh, we have group advising sessions to make sure that students are on track not only to plan out you know, future semesters, but to make sure that they are completing um, their goals and making sure that they are uh, on track to graduate within um, a time frame that is reasonable both to the student um, and if necessary, your uh, international student visa regulations. Next slide, please. So this is our wonderful academic advising team. Um, 
we have currently six advisors across um, all the different programs within our division, specifically for integrated marketing and communications. As I mentioned earlier, I'm the uh, sole advisor to the public relations and corporate communications program, but we also have um, Melinda Bakai, Kat Tartaglia, and Lillian Park, who advise students in our integrated marketing program. And so you will be assigned an academic advisor uh, as soon as you are admitted to the program. Uh, your advisor will help you with course registration and you, this dedicated academic advisor will work with you and partner with you throughout your entire studies at NYU. Next slide, please. Okay, so in addition to the um, academic advising office, we also have the NYU Wasserman Center at SPS. So the Wasserman Center is essentially our Office of Career Services. And so if you have any questions um, related to your professional goals, if you want assistance with writing a resume, with writing a cover letter, with someone editing your resume or editing a cover letter, or if you want tips on um, you know, preparing for an interview, the NYU Wasserman Center is an amazing resource uh, that's available specifically for SPS students. And you will have access to the NYU Wasserman Center, not only as a student on, in the program, but also as an alum as well too. Next slide, please. And so the NYU Wasserman Center at um, SPS is in charge of everything related to career services. We have a great online um, website called Handshake, where there are various off-campus employment opportunities that are posted there for NYU students. In addition, if you are a student and you are interested in working on campus, please note that both international and domestic students are authorized to work on campus as early as your first semester of study. Uh, the NYU Wasserman Center helps manage that webpage. In addition, uh, we strongly encourage you to connect with the NYU Wasserman Center at SPS as early as your first semester in the program. Oftentimes, students will reach out to the Wasserman Center when they are looking for a summer internship or before uh, they complete their degree and they're starting the job search. But we strongly encourage you to connect with them as early in, on in your program, so in the first semester, uh, if possible, just because the NYU Wasserman Center is available to kind of help you with just long-term career planning. So say you are interested in working in marketing, but you, you're not quite sure which sector you want to work in, public sector versus private sector, Chat with a career coach. Tell them what's going on. I, I mentioned earlier that the Washman Center is available for your resume and, and for cover letter and for interview prep, but they're also there to give you advice on how to make an informed decision about, to, uh, about how to prepare for your career up after degree completion. And so this is, again, an underutilized resource, and we would strongly encourage you to connect with them as soon as you start your studies in the program. Next slide. Thanks so much. So the various services that the Wasserman Center provides for students um, ranges. Uh, like in academic advising, there are one-on-one -on -one, um, career coaching appointments available. So say you are a first semester student and you are not quite sure which sector you wanna work in. Um, you wanna maybe work for a luxury brand. You maybe wanna work in marketing for a tech company. Talk to a career coach at the Wasserman Center. They will help kind of help you make an informed decision about what to keep in mind um, moving forwards. In addition, if you are getting started on uh, looking for an internship, then connect with a career coach at the NYU Wasserman Center um, to sit down and chat about that too. In addition, there are various industry engagement events. Uh, so I know for Integrated Marketing and Communication, last semester we had a great event with the Wasserman Center and with the, our academic departments where we were able to speak to students about, you know, LinkedIn and making sure that you have a LinkedIn profile that will stand out for students who are pursuing a career in marketing and public relations. We also have group career coaching. Say you are in a cohort and three of your friends are looking for internships too and you want to meet with a career coach, we would strongly encourage you to attend a, a group coaching session because you might have a good question, your classmates might have good questions and they can all get um, answered in group coaching sessions so that you can kind of partner together to make sure that you guys are all on track to um, prepare professionally after degree completion. Um, in addition, there are also drop-in hours available too. So say you apply for an internship, you just get a phone call to schedule a phone appointment for an interview in a couple of days. 
Go to the NYU Wasserman Center at SPS's drop-in hours to speak to a career coach to prep for the interview um, and to, keep, to make sure that you are you know, in the best shape possible to get that internship. Next slide, thank you. So this, these are statistics based on a recent survey we provided to students graduating um, in May 2019. And for survey respondents, 100% uh, of the graduates from the Public Relations and Corporate Communication program found full-time employment within six months of degree completion. Uh, for the Integrated Marketing program, we found that 92.7%, so close to 92% of the graduates found full-time employment within six months of degree completion. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, the Washington Center is an underutilized resource. Uh, a little less than half of the students um, obtain the, um, their employment opportunities through NYU or the Washington Center, uh, most likely through our online portal called Handshake. And one thing that's, I think, really exciting is that 48.4, so a little less than 50% of survey respondents, were able to receive two or more job offers um, upon degree completion. And again, this is statistics that are representative of students who completed our um, survey for graduating students. Next slide. And so within um, integrated marketing and public relations and corporate communications, there are a lot of benefits to studying at NYU. Uh, you have a globally recognized degree. In addition, being in New York City allows you to connect uh, with various employers. Um, as you can see, these are some sample job titles and some sample um, companies that our uh, students have gone on to work for. And, you know, with that said, the employment opportunities, they really vary. I've had students who graduated from the program, um, worked at an internship for the UN since they had no prior work experience, and then ended up working for the UN full time. I've also had students who have gone on to graduate from the program and, you know, land almost C-suite level positions. And so it does depend on what kind of professional experience you have. And I find that students who are able to kind of maximize their experiences at NYU, being part of a student organization, um, you know, volunteering, you know, and if possible, you know, working off campus or working at a, um, on campus position, there are all things that can kind of help get you towards uh, building your professional pathway. And so as you can see here, a lot of recognized companies, a lot of coveted positions uh, for students who have graduated from our programs. And at this point, I'd like to pass the presentation over to our wonderful student, Ria, who will be sharing her experiences in the Integrated Marketing Program. Hi, everybody. My name is Ria. I hope I'm uh, clearly audible to everybody. Um, so um, I, to introduce myself, I'm from India, an international student. I'm a second year student at NYU. Um, last year I got uh, the Dean Scholarship, uh, called the Dean Scholarship, and I'm also the president of the Integrated Marketing Association. Um, so uh, like a lot of people connect with me on LinkedIn and on various platforms to ask and understand how my student experience is. So I always tell them that, um, NYU experience is very, like it's uniquely customizable for wh how, what you want to get out of the university. So in terms of, let's take an example of classes. So every class or like different subjects that I, I would have in a class. So my one uh, core subject that I had to take for my second uh, semester was competitive strategy. And I really wanted to learn design thinking and competitive strategy. So I chose a professor um, that would teach me design thinking in competitive strategy. So um, similarly, you could, you could could have various professors teaching one particular course and they're all adjunct faculties and they all have different skill sets and different industry experience and different industry exposure. So depending on how you want to customize your experience and advance your learning in a particular industry, um, you could pick that professor in that class and then connect with them and learn in that direction better. Um, the second thing which is very customizable is how your day would look like. So for instance, I'm extremely interested in entrepreneurship and entrepreneurial activities. So I spend a lot of my time um, at the entrepreneurship lab at NYU. I'm also extremely involved in all the activities. So I would say some of the best things that happened to me at NYU happened to me because I got involved. Involved in terms of I was in the graduate student council in my first year. So I was the community service chair where I got to work with so many people from all across 
um, SPS. So someone from real estate or someone from sports and business or someone from PRCC. Um, and we all at the student council came together and discussed ideas and how to make and build that community um, like in a more stronger and a vibrant way. So my co-chair was, was Vietnamese and I learned a lot from him and like the way his work ethic, um, like the way he used to work and the way he used to do things. So it was an amazing experience. Um, the second thing would be that I'm also the president of the Integrated Marketing Association. So we have a strong, diverse um, team of 10 people that we uh, learn from. So, and we create activities for the whole student body. Um, so the people are from Colombia, Peru, um, Thailand, China, um, all across the world. And it's amazing to see how um, we interact and how different perspectives come out and how um, cultures impact the way you think in marketing, especially. Um, so it makes you a much more global citizen and like a diver, it gives you a diverse perspective, definitely makes you an open learner. Um, uh, so uh, apart from that, networking in the school is very, uh, I think it's a, it's a very big plus point of SPS because uh, all the professors are from uh, the industry and industry in terms of like they work in, uh, in and around New York. Um, so it's just like they're very approachable. So in, in my first year, for instance, my uh, integrated marketing professor was the vice president of Colgate. And um, just the insight that he had to share on how Colgate does all of their activities and how a CPG industry would function was just incredible. And then I could email him and go um, for a coffee chat to discuss more about how I could further my career. Um, so like this, we have 150 or plus adjunct faculties that are very easily accessible and are very willing to help the students and they all work in New York, which is amazing. Um, and I feel, uh, apart from the, all of that and my learning experiences, I feel very supported by NYU. So in terms of being an international student and gaining any sort of skill set, so let's say I would like to improve my writing. So for international students, there's a writing center. I was also a part of this success cohort, which is a six week program at Wasserman. So in that they um, helped me sort of introspect and navigate on how I would want to take my career ahead. So six in, during the time of the six weeks, um, the cohort would come together and it was a six people, eight people cohort and we would bounce ideas off of each other and reflect and introspect in what industries we would like to go to or um, how we like, what is our working style or are we like an individual worker or a group worker, just gave me a lot of perspective on how I would like to think and move ahead. Uh, apart from that, just the amount of research, like you're never free. There's so much to do in a university that you're that you if you're a constant learner you'll always have something or the other to do in and around the university um yeah and i think uh that's it and if you guys want to learn and know more about the marketing industry um the sector and how uh, like any other resources or how life is like at nyu uh, for the students um you could visit our instagram page which is nyu ima we have resources there we have introduction of students you will know how your community would be like and we keep on posting events on it so you could see um the potential events that we do in the university um uh, yeah, and now I would like to hand it over to uh, Professor Jennifer Scott uh, for industry expertise. Thank you so much, Ria, and it's a pleasure to join everybody virtually uh, for this session. So, obviously, I imagine that one of the things all of you are asking yourselves is how will investing in this degree help me get the job that I really want, and how will it help me progress in my career? So uh, I'm currently a member of the full-time faculty here at School of Professional Studies. But prior to joining, I spent over 20 years in leadership positions at global agencies such as Edelman and Ogilvy. So I'm actually here to give you an industry perspective on what a degree like this means. So um, I spent uh, about five years running the office of Ogilvy Public Relations in New York. We had about 130 employees, and I was uh, involved in every single new hire that we made. Um, the reason for that being that we took our talent extremely seriously. 
we knew that our agency was going to thrive uh, or not, depending on the quality of our people. And I will tell you that every single resume that we received, who ha which had a, an advanced degree in the field on the resume, so in marketing, in public relations and communications and advertising, virtually all of those resumes made it through the first round. Um, and many of those applicants got an interview. Why? Well, because an advanced degree for us in the industry means that you're dedicated to your profession, that you know how to work hard, um, and that you have a very, very good grounding in all the skills that we require uh, in the professional world. Additionally to that, if the degree was from an institution like the School of Professional Studies at NYU, we also knew a few other things about you before we met you. We knew that you were capable of um, delivering according to the academic rigor of a school like New York University. And we also knew that the School of Professional Studies, as Rhea mentioned, is focused on not just theory, but application of the skills. We know that the professors at the School of Professional Studies are, are distinguished in their careers as professionals, as well as teachers. So um, for example, at the moment, uh, I'm teaching with my colleague, Professor Jay Kosminski in uh, research process and methodology. And Professor Kosminski spent many years as the worldwide vice president for communications for Johnson & Johnson. So he brings that incredible experience into the classroom. And that is invaluable for students. Another colleague of mine is Professor Ariana Davis, who teaches um, digital, digital writing and pl platforms. She is, during the day, the digital director for all the properties that fall under oh, the Oprah magazine. So she brings that very fresh industry perspective to the classroom. So when I was looking to hire the best candidate, this degree really helped me. Um, and then, of course, when we were looking to promote our people, right, from a junior associate to associate, or even from senior vice president to managing director, we found that there were certain qualities in the people who succeeded at Ogilvy Public Relations um, that were relatively consistent. Firstly, everybody who succeeded might have had a specialization in a particular part of our business, but they were good generalists. Um, and that was very important to us. Um, they were also good team players. They understand the nature of cross-cultural and diverse communications today. Um, and they also could see the big picture. They could see beyond the immediate tasks of their job. And when I think about the skills that you will receive inside the classroom in integrated marketing communications at SPS, all of those skills are there. So Rhea mentioned about the diversity of your, your, your colleagues, your fellow students. They bring a wealth of cultural, uh, academic, and other kinds of experience to the table. In your classrooms, you will cultivate the ability to work in teams. You will cultivate the ability to solve real world problems. All of these skills are extremely important as you move through your career, allowing you to progress um, and achieve the kinds of promotions and the kinds of opportunities that you want. So I hope that it's helpful to you. Um, you know, although I'm a full-time professor now, I'm recently out of the other side of the business. And I can tell you that this degree um, not only uh, is appreciated by people who are looking to hire the best in the industry, but it is something that will give you the kind of foundation you need to build your career long-term. So now I'm going to hand it back to Bonnie, I believe. Yes, thank you very much, Jennifer. And thank you everyone um, for contributing to this conversation and offering your wonderful, wonderful insight. So I'm gonna put up some important contact information. I'll leave this up for a few minutes so you can um, write it down. And again, these slides will be distributed. So if you have further questions after today, feel free to reach out to any of us. 
Um, and so we have 20 minutes left. So I'm going to start going through our um, Q&A. And again, if you have any questions, if anything wasn't covered during the presentation, please type those into the Q&A box and I'll start um, reading them for our panelists. Okay, so the first question we have, um, Andy, this one's going to be for you. How many concentrations can you take? Great question. So for both the integrated marketing and the public relations and corporate communications program, students can only do one concentration area. Um, it's a great question. And I know that students uh, who are, well, many of you are going to be overachievers, want to do multiple, but just due to the curricular requirements and with our um, accreditation, uh, students will only graduate from, uh, will only be able to complete one concentration area uh, in order to graduate from our programs. Can I, can I add more to that? Absolutely. Yes, please. Uh, uh, so uh, in the integrated marketing program, uh, since I was a business major in undergraduate, my undergraduate school, um, I had done a few um, courses that were similar to the courses at NYU. So I kind of could drop those courses and take more electives um, in the field that I wanted to. So um, technically, I only get one concentration, but you could study more concentrations. So for instance, I'm doing a combination of digital marketing and marketing analytics classes. Um, so I mean, that is a possibility. Um, in your like when you're choosing your concentration. Okay, next question. This one's going to be for you, Darlene. So Amber says she's an international student, but she went to Ohio State University for her undergraduate study. Does she still need to submit the TOEFL or the IELTS scores? That's a great question. We get that often. So if you're an international um, student, but you studied in uh, in the US or even in a country where English is the primary language of instructions, you will not need to participate in any of the language requirements. So that's the TOEFL, the IELTS, or the Pearson's Vet. Okay, another question for you, Darlene. Um, I think you're, you're the best person to answer this. What does graduate housing look like? Um, so there, there are opportunities for students to do housing um, through NYU. Um, however, I think Andy might be the best to um, answer that question um, through residential life. Um, I know there's a lot of graduate students who choose to um, live off campus, um, but there are opportunities to live on campus. Um, Andy, do you wanna? Yes, thanks so much, Darlene. Uh, so NYU does offer graduate student housing and I'm actually going to provide you all with a link in the chat box. Uh, with that said, uh, within our programs, the overwhelming majority, if I were to guess, probably like 99% of students in integrated marketing and uh, public relations live off campus. Uh, but if you would like to, uh, you know, if you're interested and strongly considering on-campus housing, please view the link that I provided in the chat box. We have an Office of Graduate Student Housing. They'll be able to tell you what type of housing we offer and what the likelihood is for you to be able to um, access graduate student housing. In addition, as Natalie spoke about earlier in this presentation, we strongly encourage you to connect with the um, NYU PR League, which is a student-run organization, and the NYU IMA, which is the Integrated Marketing Association. Connect with current students to see how they were able to obtain housing. Maybe if you are going to start the program next fall, there are people who are looking for roommates, but utilizing the current students will be a great resource to um, make sure that you are getting your housing settled before your graduate studies. Great, thank you. Okay, so Natalie, I'm gonna ask you this question. So for spring 2021, do you know if classes will be online or in person? Great question. Um, the university has decided that we will offer a combination of modalities with regards to the spring courses. What that means is that we have 100% remote synchronous classes. That means that you're live with an instructor at a particular time of the day. There are some asynchronous options, which means that you have to complete modules in your own time, but with due dates. And there's also an in-person option. Um, where you will show up to class. The university ha has taken all the social distancing precautions, reduced room capacities, things like that, to ensure the health and safety of our students, staff, and faculty. Um, so there is pretty much any modality that you are interested available for the spring 2021 term. Great, thanks. Okay, Darlene, I have another question about the application. Are there any standardized test requirements 
um, as part of the application? So the only um, standardized test that we require is the language assessment test. So the TOEFL or the IELTS, if you don't obviously qualify for a waiver. Um, so we don't require the GRE or GMAT. So I know a lot of people are excited <laughs> to hear that, I'm sure. Um, so those tests are not required. However, if you've already taken either exam and you feel that your, you know, your scores are very strong, you can submit them as part of your application as a supplement to maybe strengthen your application if maybe um, your GPA isn't as high as you would like. Um, so that's an option. Um, you do have to do that within the application. Um, so we won't accept any scores after you already submitted. Um, but to answer the question, it's not required. And if you don't submit a GRE, GMAT, it's not going to be held negatively against you by any means. Okay. And kind of a follow-up question. If an international student has an IELTS score of seven, do they need to retake the exam? I mean, that is a personal decision. Um, as I mentioned, for these two programs, in order to be waived from the VEPT, you do have to have um, over 7.0 on the IELTS. So if you feel that you can um, you know, test more strongly the next time around, I would say go for it. Um, but if not, um, you will just have to be um, part of, take, take part in one of the other language assessments. Um, it's a 50 minute test. It's all done online uh, remotely. Um, and instructions are provided once you've submitted your application. Great, thanks. Okay, Andy, I have a question for you about internships. So we have one um, participant who's asking specifically about taking an internship or doing an internship in Japan, but if you could answer the question more broadly for all of our international students who maybe want to do an internship in their home country, is that possible? Great question. So doing an internship in your home country is definitely possible and we would strongly encourage you to do that if your goal is to be able to graduate from the program and return to your whole home country uh, with that said we would strongly advise you not to register for our in-person internship course uh, just because you would have to take the course um, the course is tip is right now being offered remotely but during uh, the ac regular academic years they're usually it's usually offered in person and so, um, yeah, if you're going to be interning abroad at home, so if you are interning in Japan, then it would be quite challenging to, to take the internship course and receive academic credit for it from, a, from abroad. But plenty of our students end up interning over the summer in their home countries, not having to do the internship course. That's not an issue whatsoever. Um, in addition, we have an amazing alumni network um, called the Violet Network. And so we strongly encourage students to connect um, with the Violet Network see which alumni uh, currently are based in Japan. I'm sure we have plenty of alumni from Japan um, to see you know, where they're working, to see if there are any internship opportunities, um, just because it, one of the many, many benefits of studying at NYU is that it is a globally recognized brand and we have alumni from all over the world who uh, with an NYU degree. Great, thanks Andy. So Jennifer, I'm gonna give this question to you and you touched on it a little bit, but maybe you can elaborate. Um, so Dandra would like to know with the current economy and many others taking the time to go back to school, how will obtaining a master's degree from NYU specifically help me stand out once I graduate? Okay, great, great question. And I'm sure something that's on everybody's mind. So firstly, as I mentioned, I think, uh, you know, NYU is a top school. And so already you will have a graduate degree from a school that is respected all over the world. Secondly, the School of Professional Studies is, is understood to be a school that excels in applied theory. So we prepare you to go into the business world. We prepare you with the skills that will be valued immediately. In addition to that, however, and, and I perhaps Ria has something to add to this. Um, Andy mentioned the, the vast alumni network that you will build up in the course of two years of being at this school, even if you are virtual. Um, and these people are your, are your network for the rest of the, your professional career, and you would be surprised at their power in helping you find jobs. Um, in addition to that, um, as Ria mentioned, the professors that you're going to encounter, you know, there are 150 adjunct professors, all of them very open to giving you counsel, building relationships. Um, what you will find is you will graduate from NYU, not just with a degree, but with a vast network of contacts. And that is really invaluable in terms of being able to locate a job and to being able to be supported in applying for those jobs um, and potentially even getting them. So I don't know, Ria, if you wanted to add anything to that. 
I, I think you've done justice to every point that I could have added. Um, but yeah, just uh, learning from every place that you could and making those networking connections are very important to landing a job. So, and NYU and New York City provides you with a platform to do so. Great, thank you both for your insight. Okay, Andy, I have a question for you mm -hmm. about um, international student visas for, specifically for the spring 2021 semester. So there's actually a couple questions. Um, looks like a, a few applicants are concerned if they'll be able to get a visa for this spring semester. Yes. Or if, sorry, or if you recommend they just um, plan to be remote for the semester. Yeah. Uh, very timely question, um, and the answer is yes and yes. So the um, Office of Global Services, also known as the OGS, they are issuing student visas and I-20s to newly admitted students. Uh, and Natalie touched upon this earlier, so we've had plenty of, uh, we are offering courses uh, fully online, blended, meaning um, some of the classes will meet online, the other class sessions will meet in person, and we are also offering some fully in-person classes. With that said, all courses, uh, you'll have access to all courses um, online. So if you are planning on coming to the spring 2021 semester and you are an international student, you could start taking your, uh, either your blended um, or in-person classes online, and we've had several students who were able to get into the country a couple weeks after the semester began. It also, of course, depends on whether or not your country's um, you know, home embassy will be able to meet, uh, meet with you so that you're able to get authorization to enter the country. But uh, presuming you're able to do that, then you are able to still access your courses online. And then once you are in the United States, you can then update your status and uh, attend any blended courses in person and attend any in-person courses fully in person um, as well. So it's something that is unique to the um, spring 2021 semester due to the pandemic. And so the university has really put its best foot forward to make sure that our international students are getting access to their classes, both in person and remotely. And we are doing whatever we can to ensure that you are compliant with your F1 visa regulations. Great, thanks, Andy. So we have seven minutes left and we've got a lot of questions to get through. So if we don't get through all of them, I just wanna remind everyone here today, you can reach out to um, any of us that are is on your screen right now and we'll be glad to continue this conversation after today. So we have a question about um, the class profile. So I'll, I'll answer from my um, perspective and then if anybody else um, wants to answer this. So for um, the PRCC program this year we had about the fall incoming class was about 50% domestic and 50% international and for both programs we have we see um, students coming from 20 plus countries all over the world so it really is a global program um, and then with respect to you know work experience we see students coming right out of their undergraduate program. We see students with one or two years in the industry. And we also see students who maybe have 10, 15 years experience. We see career changers. So you don't, I see another question asking if you need to have marketing experience or if you need to have studied marketing in your undergraduate to apply to the program. And the answer to that is no. We do see a lot of career changers. Um, so it really makes for a very diverse and dynamic classroom experience because you're getting um, a lot of diverse perspectives, people with different levels of experience and from all around the world. Um, did anybody want to add anything to that? Okay, we'll go on to the next question. So someone's asking if the IM degree is able to be completed part time. Um, specifically if you're working. So yes, both programs can be done part time. So you have the option to take anywhere from one to four classes per semester. The only requirement is you have to complete the program within five years. But again, you can take summer classes if you want to take, you know, maybe one or two courses over a semester. Um, and take summer classes so you're not drawing it out too long. It's also very flexible. So if you wanna start your first semester taking one class while you're working just to see how the workload is gonna be, you can do that. And then the next semester you can take two classes or three classes if you feel like you can take more. So it's very flexible in that, in that sense. Okay, so Sophia wants to know, does the IMA prefer applicants immediately out of undergraduate or do you prefer applicants with work experience? So I touched on it a little bit, but Darlene, maybe if you wanna give us 
a little bit more in depth of an answer. Yeah, so um, we receive applications from students, uh, you know, from across the board, students who are coming right out of undergrad to middle level professionals to senior level. Um, so you don't necessarily have to have a certain amount of years of experience. However, I think it's a really great idea if you can get those internships, you know, in marketing or in public relations, um, something that's transferable, um, you know, even something with maybe relating to data, if you're interested in going the marketing analytics route. Um, so the more experiences you can get, the better, I would say. But um, as, as far as, you know, what the student body looks like, we really do have students from you know, really all, all professional levels. Um, I think that's what makes the classroom so unique. Um, I also graduate of SPS, um, and that was one of my favorite things about the classroom is because we have students from all over and with so many different diverse perspectives and experiences. Um, so to answer the question, no, you don't have to have a minimum um, years of experience. Great, okay, so we have a question about the rate of job offers for international students. And I don't know the specific rate for international um, versus domestic, but as Andy went over in, during his part of the presentation, it is pretty high for both programs. And the latest data we have is for the class of 2019, where we saw 100% um, uh, graduates had full-time employment within six months, and it was around 93% for the integrated marketing student. Um, as far as the difference between international students and domestic students, we, we don't have that information. Okay, so what is the approximate um, size of each incoming class for each program? Is it predominantly students who have just finished their undergraduate degree? So for the PRCC program for the fall semester, we typically see between 70 and 80 incoming students and the spring is a little bit of a smaller, well, a lot of bit of a smaller cohort. We, we tend to see 15 to 20 incoming students for the spring semester. Natalie, do you have the numbers for IM? For the income, I'm sorry, for the spring incoming? For both fall and spring, just a, a rough idea. Um, I can tell you that this past term in the fall of 2020, we had approximately 300 new students, um, but that's a bit low for obvious reasons. And um, typically in the spring, it's around 100, but again, it's hard to say. Um, just due to the current conditions, um, students are making decisions that they typically might not make. Okay, Darlene, I have another question for you about the application. Um, so someone has a little bit of concern about their undergraduate GPA not being competitive enough for the application process. What suggestions or advice do you have for, for a student in that situation? Yeah, I think I was trying to type, um, I was typing to another student who asked a very similar question. And, you know, within our admissions office, we definitely take a very holistic approach to the way that we review applicants. So we're really not just looking at your GPA. Um, we're really looking for, at you as a whole and how you're going to be able to contribute to the classroom and add value. Um, so, you know, within your academic you know, transcripts, you know, we're looking at, you know, the coursework that you're taking, the rigor of the program, you know, how long ago did you graduate? Um, you know, is there any positive trends in your performance? Um, so ultimately, if you're worried about your GPA, I would say that's not going to define you as an applicant. We're really going to then focus, you know, on your work experience. If you have strong work experience, if you've been working in the field, um, if you're, you know, you have great letters of recommendation from your supervisors that can really speak on your behalf and your dedication, you know, to being successful. Um, and I would say the statement of purpose is probably one of the most important um, components of the application. I mean, writing is such a strong skill to have in graduate school and to be able to write a very succinct, you know, well-spoken statement of purpose to express yourself and, you know, your goals and desires for why you're joining this program. And, you know, if you did have a hard, any hardships or challenges in your undergraduate, um, you know, performance, you know, mention those. Let us know. Um, you know, that shows maturity. It shows growth. Um, and we want to know more about you and, you know, your willingness to, you know, step up and, you know, make a change when you're in graduate school. So I would say, you know, we, we definitely take a part, we definitely look at all of the different components of the application. So don't feel disheartened about a low GPA. I've seen some of the students who've had really low GPAs, wrote amazing personal statements, and now they're Dean Scholars. You know, they do, they did so well in the program. So um, don't get down. <laughs> Just work on your statement of purpose work on your resume and feel free to connect with the admissions office to learn other tips on how to, you know, put it together a competitive application. 
Great, thanks. All right, so it is one o'clock and I wanna be mindful of everyone's time. I know there's a few questions we couldn't get to, but again, feel free to reach out to any of us. Our contact information is on the screen and we'll be happy to continue this conversation. Um, so I wanna thank all of the panelists for joining today. And I also wanna thank everyone who attended. Um, it's been really great hearing all your questions and um, hopefully we can continue this conversation and we'll see you maybe in the spring or next fall. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.